Hey there, I'm your host Leo and welcome to this episode of Live Video Essentials. Today's topic is color depth or bit depth, which is an important property on digital images and videos. It will get quite technical, but I will make it as easy to understand as possible. The concept is the same for videos and images, as video is just a lot of images played one after another. So to simplify it, we are mostly going to talk about images, but the rules apply for video as well. A digital image is made up of a lot of pixels, each having a color. Your computer knows a lot of different color systems which are used to represent colors in, like RGB, HSB, CMYK or YCBCR. Each of these systems relies on having different components or channels a color is made of. For example, CMYK has cyan, magenta, yellow and black, which is a combination you might be familiar with from your printer. Inside your computer though, the RGB system is mostly used, since your display is relying on it as well. Here each color is made up of a different intensity of red, green and blue. So when an image is displayed on your computer screen, each pixel has a red, green and blue intensity, which mixed together create the pixel's color. The color depth of an image now determines how many bits per pixel per channel are used to store this information and the more bits you have, the more precise a color can be described. <laughs> Let's start with an example to clear this up. We are going to look at a non-color grayscale system first that could be used for a black and white image. This system only has one brightness component instead of multiple ones like RGB. If the bit depth is only one bit, the brightness of each pixel is either 0 or 1, on or off. So you end up with two colors a pixel can be, black and white. Increase the bit depth to two bits and you end up with four different combinations, black and white as well as a darker and a lighter gray. With three bits you end up with eight shades of gray, going up to the common 8-bit color depth giving you 256 combinations to choose from. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the same image in different bit depths. The lack of quality is most noticeable in the sky. For understanding this concept better, it's important to notice that a higher color depth usually won't give you a bigger range of colors, but rather more variations in between. So when comparing the 1-bit to the 8-bit color depth, the extra bits at 8-bit won't give you any darker black or brighter white, but a lot of shades in between. The same concept applies to the colored systems as well. So if you have an RGB image with a bit depth of 1, each component is either on or off, 1 or 0. If all are off, you end up with black. You also have red, green and blue and you can mix to make yellow, cyan and purple. And if all are 1, you got white. That's a total of 8 different colors and while that's enough for a pack of crayons, a digital image with just 8 colors looks awful. Imagine you would have a camera shooting with a color depth of 1 bit. So when you see this, your pictures would end up like this because every pixel your camera sees has to be one of the 8 colors. So it picks the closest one and for a lovely picture of a green field, that would mostly be green. Therefore, for digital images to look realistic, we need more bits and that's why a computer is usually working with an 8-bit color depth, giving you 16.7 million different colors. With so many possible color tones, it's very hard to distinguish between neighboring ones already, making it precise enough for most use cases. But while 8-bit is the common standard, you will often find mid and high-end photo and video gear shooting in 10 or 12-bit, some even higher. So why do you need something like 10-bit if you can't really tell the difference between neighboring colors at 8-bit already? There are situations where these extra bits really come in handy, especially with very dark or very bright scenes where the extra bits help you keep detail in the shot and increase results when color grading in post-production. A higher bitrate also helps avoid the blending effect you see on gradients like a sunset or the background behind me. So you should only shoot in 10 bit from now on? No, certainly not. But if your camera does shoot in 10 bit, you should take advantage of that because it can really improve your end results, even when that would be compressed down to 8 bit. 
And since this is live video essentials, for most live setups you're going to end up using 8-bit as well, which is also the standard in our live video production app Mimo Live. Now that you've learned about color depth on images and videos, you can go and check your equipment, what it is capable of and adjust the settings to your workflow. If you want to get more awesome information on live video production, head over to livevideoessentials.com or subscribe to this channel. Thanks for your attention, see you again in the next one.